This week, Kentucky's Republican governor cut some health benefits for more than 460 thousand people in that state. Vision and dental coverage for thousands of Medicaid recipients were axed after Governor Matt Bevin's attempt to revamp Medicaid was tamped down by a federal judge. That decision was a litmus test for other states that are interested in following suit to try to save funds. So joining us now to discuss the impact of that legal decision and also of Matt Bevin's uh, decision following that legal decision is State Representative Rocky Adkins, a minority leader in the Kentucky House. Great to see you, sir. Good to see you, Crystal. Good to be with you this morning. Great to be with you, too. I miss your state very much, as you know. Um, so I want to set this up for our audience a little bit, people who haven't been following Kentucky politics as closely. One thing that makes the state unique is uh, almost uniquely among southern states, Kentucky went forward with the full Medicaid expansion and really embraced Obamacare. And what has the result been of that embrace of Obamacare in the state of Kentucky? Well, Crystal, uh, as you know, when uh, Medicaid was expanded here in Kentucky, uh, we had almost 20% of our residents that had uh, no health coverage whatsoever. Uh, our governor at that time uh, put in place really a state-controlled uh, part of the Affordable Care Act, which allowed us at the state level, uh, basically our plan was called uh, Connect. And uh, from Connect and expanded Medicaid, uh, we drove down people being uninsured from about 20% to almost uh, 7% across the state. So it's had a very positive impact on people who work two or three jobs, could never afford to have uh, quality health care for themselves and their families. But not only was it a uh, positive thing for many of our residents, almost a half a million people, but it was also a very positive thing for the healthcare industry and the providers themselves. Uh, it basically allowed where you had indigent care at emergency rooms, now you had people able to actually have access to a doctor and a way to pay for uh, the care that they were getting from the providers. So it influxed in a, a good amount of money into the healthcare industry itself. And as you know, Many parts of our state were struggling and is struggling from downturn in the coal economy, especially in the eastern and western Kentucky. And uh, many of the jobs that have been provided uh, to make up for some of that downturn has been in the healthcare industry. So uh, the Affordable Care Act uh, Connect in Kentucky has been a very positive thing, in my opinion. And it not only has provided health care for those who have needed it uh, badly, but it's also helped the health care industry, especially in rural areas of our state, many of the areas like I represent. Right. Well, in the area you represent did really benefit from that Medicaid expansion. And yet in spite of that, um, a lot of folks you represent voted for Governor Matt Bevin, who ran on a pledge to do away with the Medicaid expansion. So what actions has he taken uh, since he's been in office? Well, I, I would just say uh, this to you. We had a very, very low turnout uh, in our election that elected a governor. He, we had something like a 30% turnout. He got 16% of that 30%, so I wouldn't call that a mandate. I think many people, since he's been elected, have actually seen the very policies that uh, he is supporting. And right now in Kentucky, uh, in my opinion, Governor Bevin is not a very popular uh, governor. The polls show that uh, his uh, war on public education of trying to create uh, charter schools, his war on public pension of teachers, retired teachers, and public employees, firemen, emergency responders has not been received uh, well at all. Uh, the attack on working families of policies that I believe has uh, driven down wages of hardworking, everyday, blue-collar Kentuckians, uh, this governor, in my opinion, his policies now are being uh, basically seen across the state. And there has been an outcry, as you saw in this last session, thousands of uh, people in the education community, from teachers to bus drivers to cooks to superintendents, came to Frankfort, Kentucky. We had as many as 14,000 people uh, that came to Frankfort in one day, and the education community came. We've had construction workers, labor unions that have uh, come to Frankfurt and outcry of some of the policies that have happened uh, with uh, this administration and this governor. And then the tax policy that was passed that just took effect on uh, this past Sunday, July the 1st, which gives 
raises taxes on 95% of our residents, but gives a tax break uh, to the top 5%, uh, the most wealthy in our state. Those policies, uh, Crystal, are not being received very well in this governor, in my opinion, by the polls I'm seeing and what I'm hearing in my communities that I represent across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, this governor is not very popular in Kentucky as we talk here this morning. Well, let me ask you, what has been the impact of this latest move to strip health, strip uh, vision and dental benefits from uh, hundreds of thousands of Kentuckians? What have, what have you seen on the ground? Well, on the ground yesterday, many of our members in Louisville had a press conference. It was headed up by Representative Johnny Jenkins. Uh, Congressman John Yarmouth was there as well, and along with uh, Mayor Greg Fisher and several of our House colleagues, House Democrats were there as well. And uh, it's an outcry. You can imagine over 460,000 people all of a sudden being impacted and not uh, being able to have access to uh, vision and dental care. You know, the eyes and the teeth are part of the body, in my opinion. And for the governor to come out with uh, this kind of cut to benefits, uh, uh, basically over the weekend after he lost uh, a federal judge ruling, that struck down his waiver that he had basically uh, proposed and had been approved, uh, which would have required work requirements and uh, community service. And, and also there would have been also some uh, other things that would have been some new rules in that was struck down because of a federal Medicaid law that protects uh, low income and vulnerable citizens. So, well, speak uh, to this... that though a little bit more because I think a lot of people would say, well, why shouldn't you have to go out and, and work or at least try to get a job if you want to if you want to have these government benefits? What do you say to them? Well, I would say that what we are seeing to implement the program that the governor was trying to implement would actually cost more money than the current program that we have and costing more money to the citizens and the taxpayers while we're basically impacting and more than likely losing health care for 100,000 people in Kentucky. So it will cost uh, and, more money to insure it, less people. Those are the numbers? That's, that's, that is the numbers we are seeing from different groups out there that are doing these studies uh, that this program could cost as much as $300 million more to implement, basically to oversee, to make sure work requirements are being um, implemented, to make sure new rules are being implemented. Uh, so premiums would, would also uh, be impacted by uh, these low-income individuals. Many of the people that are being affected here, Crystal, are, are, are low-wage earners, people who are trying to work two and three jobs. And uh, I can tell you, I chair, chair the East Kentucky Workforce Investment Board, and uh, they had been given a, uh, what I would call a contract to basically oversee and and, and help people get in the 20 hours a week, which would have been required uh, by this waiver. Uh, so the implementation and the bureaucracy to oversee this whole program of implementation of a waiver to make sure uh, individuals are, are working the 20 hours or doing the community service over 20 hours would have actually what we're seeing and what is being given back to us would have cost more money to basically employ uh, less people. Well, I think a lot of people look at Kentucky uh, from a national perspective. They see a red state. I would encourage them to keep their eye on what is happening in that state. I think they might be surprised by some of the election results they see this fall and in Governor Bevin's reelect as well. Rocky, great to see you. Thank you so much. Crystal, thank you. And I'd just like to add that we're seeing an energy across Kentucky like I've never seen in my political career. And I just finished my 31st year in the Kentucky House. And that energy is being caused by a lot of these bad policies. And one of those bad policies is the very issue of quality health care across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And I think from that energy you're going to see in November, uh, basically uh, turnouts and people who have never been involved in the electoral process, people who have been sitting on the sidelines now have made a decision that uh, they need to be in the game and they need to be a part of the process. And I think you're going to see these bad policies and this energy that, that's created across Kentucky. I think you're going to see that impact of that on November 6th of this year, 2018, uh, that, uh, that uh, you're going to see that on Election Day. Yep, I, I think you're right about that. I've been seeing that energy on the ground, too. Great to see you. We'll talk again soon. Thank you, Crystal. Take care. All right, and up next, we have Democratic nominee for Governor of Maryland, Ben Jealous. He is going to join us as part of our continuing series, The Contenders. 
And later on, we've got news from the Hill with our Hill reporter, Melanie Zanona, and our panel is here to chop it up. We've got so much to do. We're going to talk about the EPA chief. We're going to talk about Michael Cohen. And also, are you proud to be an American? Stay tuned. More rising after this.